I don't know what kind of week that you've had, but God wants to revive you. He wants to refresh you. He wants to recharge your batteries and flood your heart with His joy, His life, His peace, and His love. Precious Heavenly Father, I just bring before you your family, your sons and daughters, Lord, and no matter what kind of condition they're in, God, you are able to strengthen them, renew them, recharge them, refresh them, and you're able to revive us. Precious Heavenly Father, we put ourselves before you in the presence of your Holy Spirit, and we ask you just to download the treasures of heaven into our heart. In Jesus' precious name, amen. H2O Revival Part 4. We're having a revival, my friend. This is so good, and this is Part 4. We're going to focus on order. The word order. Now, that may not seem really exciting, but you're going to find out just how exciting it really is. Order. Let me simply start this session by saying that order is the border for success. Success always needs a container. Love needs a context, like a couple wanting to be a couple with God's blessing on them and have his favor resting on their home. They need the covenant of marriage. Marriage is an invention that God holds the patent, the blueprints, and the copyright on. It's the container, the container that he designed for a couple's success. Use it God's way and it works for you. Use it improperly and instead of God's blessing, you end up experiencing the curse. Success needs a container. My friend just bought a brand new beautiful car. It's high tech and it can do anything it seems. But you know what's interesting? He always has to respect the order of being in the car for it to work. He can't sit on the roof or on the hood. Not that he's tried, but it wouldn't work. He can't even properly use this amazing piece of machinery by sitting in the back seat. Someone's got to be in the driver's seat. That's the order. This expensive car only works properly when you respect the order. Yes, order is the border to success. All of creation testifies to the beauty and the necessity of order. Pam and I have a lot of friends who've just had babies. We just had a precious little niece born into our family, and her name is Alice Jean. Now, even with the cuteness of little babies, have you noticed how important order is? Why is it babies are so beautiful, but they have no teeth? And it just looks so right to all of us, doesn't it? You could say it looks orderly, these little pumpkins being all gums, and yet they look so adorable. You and I agree that teeth aren't a bad thing. No, they're a great thing. But just imagine if a baby had a full mouth of teeth. Look, see, that's just not right, is it? The right thing, teeth, are out of order, and it just looks, what, weird. Let's see if God specifically talks about order. After all, if it is the O atom of H2O revival, it must be pretty important. And yet order just doesn't sound like it's that big of a deal. Religious folks would rather talk about revival than order. I mean, who cares about order? Just give me some good old fashioned revival, man. And yet in the world of business analytics, order matters. Let's see if it really does matter to God Almighty. Psalm 37, verse 23, the steps of a good man or a good woman are what? Ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. You see, the steps of a good man, a good woman are what? Ordered by the Lord. We don't get to the place of God delighting in our way until we allow God to order our steps. There are sequences God gives us that trigger supernatural outcomes. Did you know that? Look at this sequence in Proverbs 16, verse 1. The plans of the mind and orderly thinking belong to man, but from the Lord comes the wise answer of the tongue. We have the responsibility or we get the responsibility and privilege of working plans and orderly thinking. But the wisdom that makes it all work comes from God Almighty. Order is the border to success. Whenever we dare to have faith and sequence in order with God's wisdom, God fills the opening. Oh, that's good news. Allow me to give you a definition of order. 
Order is a sequence of steps, lines, and boundaries with a defined goal, purpose, and outcome. Order is the accurate arrangement of things. God's Word always brings order. It immediately divides and establishes boundaries. When you read through the creation chapter in Genesis 1, you quickly see that God would speak a word of order and then division would immediately follow. That's a border, a separation. When God speaks light into the darkness, immediately he separates the night from the day. There's an order with a border creating success. Suddenly we have night and we have day. Power, light, love, energy, multiplication, growth, answers, destiny, all good things, but the misconception is that God randomly launches these acts of power without separation, without borders. Borders are called order. That's what gives order. The Bible celebrates order, both Old and New Testament. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 40, let all things be done decently and in order. Sometimes people have thought that a Christian revival is this wildfire, out of control, totally abstract, random thing. Well, that's unbiblical. That's not God's way of doing things. God is creator and on display is his extreme works of what? Order. Proverbs 24, verses 3 and 4. Through wisdom is a house built, and by understanding it is established, and by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Now look at that. That's an order. First he builds the house, then by understanding he establishes the house, and then by knowledge he fills the chambers. It's not until everything else is done beforehand that he fills it with all precious and pleasant riches. God works his order with his wisdom. So let's look at some very familiar examples that are just in our life of order that are always around us, right there in our home. First, a simple cup. Look at this cup. It has a bottom, sides, an open top. It's not complicated, but it's so effective that every home in the world has one or more cups. A cup is just a network of borders, boundaries that creates order. I've seen babies instinctively use their sippy cup and the order serves them, helping them to get the good nutritional fluids inside of them. Mom and dads all over the world are thankful for the order, the boundaries of the sippy cup. But it's just a model of order again, isn't it? Secondly, let's take a look at this power cord. The cord is not the source of power, but it's the necessary border and boundaries of order to the success of moving the power from one place to the other. The power cord becomes the container of the needed electricity. Lights can turn on when this power cord is used properly because it keeps the AC in order so it, things don't get dangerous. So what would happen if you disrespected the order or ignored the order of the court, right? Well, I think, first of all, we would get a short circuit. What happens from short circuits? The power goes out. We get darkness, damage even, of the power explosion. Then the next thing you get is it's just uselessness. No proper outcome. Jesus talked about a fig tree with no proper outcome. Number three, then you get confusion. When everything's darkness, when the power goes out, people, if you notice, they get confused. People don't know where to go. Something's not working that should be working. People have questions. Everything's confusing. And then lastly, I think you get a temptation to fake it, right? When the power cord isn't working or there's a short circuit, there's some kind of desire to come up with a substitute, with a, a need to fake it until you make it. Even in the religious world, it can be very dangerous to try to substitute for true power, the true power of God. You come up with all kinds of deceits. Consider the term sin. Let's talk about sin for a second. Sin is basically a breach of order. For example, money is meant to serve you, but if you serve money, the Bible calls that the root of all wickedness, idolatry. Intimacy is part of God's order, but when you take intimacy outside of that tool we call marriage, God's invention, then you end up with sin, adultery, fornication. 
How about knowledge? Knowledge is a great thing. Knowledge is a good thing when it's within the boundaries of wisdom, but take it outside that order and you've got pride, arrogance, deceit and destruction, sin. We need to breathe air. We need to drink water to live. But think about it. If you reverse the order, you end up drowning, don't you? Order is tangible evidence of faith. You can't have H2O without the atom O. And you can't have Bible faith without order. Why? Because Hebrew 11 verse 1 says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence, say that word, evidence of things not seen. Evidence is order. It's all about order. And order is the border of success. Order is the border. It's the context for that success. Jesus used order to create an atmosphere for the miraculous. That's right, a context for the miraculous. Remember when Jesus needed to feed a multitude of 5,000 men beside women and children? So maybe 15 to 20,000 people? Let's look at Mark 6, starting at verse 38. And Jesus said to them, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they had looked and knew, they said, five loaves and two fish. That's not a lot. Then he commanded the people all to recline on the green grass by companies. So they threw themselves down in ranks of hundreds and fifties with the regularity of an arrangement of beds of herbs, looking like so many garden plots. Order was a huge part of Jesus building faith and expectancy for the miracle of multiplication. That's how he fed the multitudes. Let's talk about Elijah the prophet. He had a life and death contest with the false prophets of Baal. The false prophets had no regard for order, but Elijah was meticulous about order and setting up for the miracle. First, the prophets of Baal did their voodoo thing and their voodoo dance, and the Bible says they broke down the sacrifice and they just made a, a mess. That's what they did. It was a mess. It was disorder. Of course, their false gods didn't show up or do anything because they really aren't real. Let's pick up the story with Elijah taking over for his part of this life and death contest. 1 Kings chapter 18, starting at verse 30. Then Elijah repaired the altar of the Lord. Then he took 12 stones according to the 12 tribes. Boy, I tell you, this is getting orderly. He made a great trench about the altar. He put the wood in order and cut the bowl in pieces, laid it on the wood and said, fill four jars with water and pour it on the burnt offering and the wood. And he said, do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, do it the third time. And they did it. The water ran about the altar and he filled the trench. At the time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant and have done all these things at your command. So let's remind ourselves, Elijah did all this order according to God's command. Then verse 37, hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may know that you, the Lord, are God. Verse 38, then, oh, say that word out loud, then, then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and also licked up the water that was in the trench. I'm talking, that was success. Elijah made borders for success. You see, we can learn so much from Elijah here. You want that revival in your life, don't you? The springs and the rivers flowing in the desert places. God's miraculous flowing where it looks like it's dry and it's barren right now. Let's simply apply Elijah's example. Remember, order speaks of your faith, your expectation. It sets up for it. Why does a farmer till his field? His faith is for the harvest. Why does a musician practice for hours all alone? She expects to perform for an audience order. You must get back the respect for God's order. That's the message I get from Elijah. Order is not the success. Order is the border or the boundaries or the container of that success. Order is not the goal, but it is the necessary means of respectfully handling the preciousness of God's power and gifts and his success. You cannot steward increase without order.
Any business without good accounting practices is practicing to go out of business, just like a home. If there's no attention to order, soon the place is a mess and the bills are unpaid. It's chaos. Simple things become difficult things. Valuable things get lost or repossessed. Jim Collins, the great business coach and best-selling author, said this, A culture of discipline is not a principle of business. It is a principle of greatness. Oh, that's powerful. You see, there's that word discipline. It gets a bad rap because we've heard of people misusing this tool, but Jim's right. It's part of greatness. Order is not meant to master you, but to serve you. Think of the Sabbath. It's part of God's order for the week. And it was made for you, but not you for the Sabbath. That's what Jesus tells us. The tithe is the same thing. The tithe is the Lord's and part of his order for handling wealth and increase. Therefore, it works for you and not you for it. Order is directly related to wisdom. Proverbs 8, verse 22. The Lord formed and brought me wisdom forth at the beginning of his way before his acts of old. God doesn't do anything out of order. Order is part of God's wisdom portfolio. Jesus is God's order for salvation, healing, blessing, answers. Jesus is God's order for bringing heaven to earth. Jesus came preaching the kingdom of God, God's way of doing things and being right. The good news is that way. God's way is at hand. It's the hookup. The message of God's kingdom is order like those power cords. Practical steps to order. This border to success. The power flow of H2O revival. Let's talk about this. Remember that pursuit is proof of desire. If you truly desire order, you must pursue it. Habit will always take you further than any desire. Can I say that again? Habit will always take you further than any desire. Many people desire, but they never obtain. Why? Because daily habits create your future. So here are some practical steps to order. I just want to give you some practical ones. Number one, consult God. Always do this. This is number one. Consult God about order. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6 is, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God, and He will direct your paths. How about Matthew 6, verse 33? Jesus said this, Seek first the kingdom of God. That's really God's kingdom orders and His righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Consult God, number one. Number two, articulate your wants and your desires. Psalm 37 verse 4 said, Delight yourself also in the Lord, and He will give you the desires and the secret petitions of your heart. Articulate your wants. Number three, live to give. Giving is a part of God's order. You have to understand this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it says love never fails. But remember this, love gives. That's why love never fails. Give and it shall be given, Jesus said. That's God's order. The greatest discovery in life is good ground to give to or to sow into. That's the greatest discovery of life. So live to give. That's number three. Number four, learn to recognize and celebrate order. You got to be able to find it. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 28, and God appointed these in the church. He appointed apostles, prophets, teachers, miracles, then gifts of healing, help administrations. You see, what you celebrate comes to you. What you disregard moves away from you. It's the vital law of attraction. You got to find people with these gifts of administration in order. Ask them questions. Find out what tools they use to promote order and organization in their life and work and partner with them. Get their partnership in your life. When you read the word, look for and recognize the significant relationship between order and creation. Look for that. Look for the, the relationship between order and healing. Look for the relationship between order and provision. Look for the relationship between order and the miraculous. You've got to celebrate this. Number five, order means you embrace elimination. 
Order means you embrace elimination. The word peace in the Hebrew means the destruction of the authority of chaos. Then this state of nothing lacking, nothing missing, nothing broken is the result. Matthew 5, verse 9, it says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. You cannot change what you tolerate. What you eliminate is as important as what you accumulate or add to your life. For the body to be healthy, you must be able to eliminate and destroy disease while adding water, breath, rest, water, nutrition to your body. To tolerate the disease would only defeat the supply of health. Peace, that's shalom. Number six, rule life from the inside out. We've been talking a lot about that because Jesus gave us this principle in John 7 that life moves from the inside out. Look at Romans 5 verse 17. Through the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness, we reign as kings or royalty in life by Jesus Christ. You see, you have to master the stuff so that you can serve the people. Master the stuff so you can serve the people. That's ruling life from the inside out. Waves and mountains should obey you. When you are mastered by the stuff, you will automatically try to balance the twisted order by trying to master the people, ruling the people. That's sin. Master your soul. Psalm 103 says, bless the Lord, O my soul. The psalmist is talking to his soul to master it. Your mind is an amazing tool, but it must be mastered by your spirit man. That's God's order. If you breach that order, you will get run over every time because that's disorder. And number seven, ask for it, pay for it, desire it. Go after order, but ask for it, pay for it, and desire it. Mark eleven twenty four 24 says, Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask for when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Proverbs 16, 16 says, How much better to get wisdom than gold and to get understanding to be chosen rather than silver. You see, the word's telling us if you need to, pay for it. Order is part of wisdom. Be willing to even pay for that counsel and advice. Every great piece of music, every success story, every miracle, every wealthy business, every great invention, every war or battle won, and all of creation from Genesis to Revelation has this in common. Order. Order. Order is the border to success. There can be no water without the O atom on the end of H2O. Now we see how absolutely necessary order is to the spiritual flow of life rivers coming out of us. There's always a bank to any river. There's always a shore to any ocean. Order is the border to your success, my friend. Of any kind, order is the border. H2O revival is yours today. God's releasing a river of power and life coming up on the inside, and we can expect order to be a celebrated part of that flow. Let's pray. Father God, your word always initiates order. You've given us this revival of humility, honor, and order. So let this Jesus H2O revival spring up on the inside of me. Let it flow out into every part of my life. I've been trying to do this in my own strength, and now I see why I keep failing. You are the source of this spring and river of life. I trust in you. Say that. Say, I trust in you, Jesus. Now let your truth revive me and set me free from every hindrance. Be glorified in my life and let the ends of the earth reverence your holy name, all because of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for sharing this very important time with us. Get our free app with the daily prayer and join us for this Tuesday Talks for an exciting, interactive question and answer and prayer time where we talk about what's important to you. At Living Room Church, you are loved. And together, we live life strong.